Where are the 49ers leaders right now? Yeah, that's that's this is one of those questions that you actually asked all of us back uh, before, a couple weeks before the season started, and we all kind of went around the you know trying to trying to pick guys out, and really right now I don't think there is one. You know the without Staley there, you know a lot of us had talked about Richard Sherman. Sherman's not around. He's like you know he's on IR, so he's not actually on the field anymore. Uh, so at this point right now, I, I can't really say there is a leader. It, it really seems if you look at the th- just the comments that you're hearing from a lot of the players. Um, it, it sound they sound like Kyle Shanahan, uh, the things that he says in, in his press conference. Mm. You know, I just you know Kyle Shanahan just got off a, an interview with KMBR. They're going through the game. I have yet to hear him talk at all about the decisions he made at the end of the first half and how that affected the game. It's all about the players, what the players aren't doing right. You know, mm. we're in position, but this guy did this, this guy did that. So. You know, right now, I think they're really mirroring what their what their uh, what their coaches is doing. Good answer, Jack. Uh, Jose, what you got? Uh, yeah, there's definitely no leader there. It's very <laughs> ugly. I think the leader would be uh, Mike McGlinchey in terms of excuses. Uh, yeah, the guy said he really. I mean, I'm gonna, in the word of Leo, they're all playing like a bunch of Tom Comptons. All right, it's Ooh. it's very bad. It's it, it's a Ooh. little it's a little despicable. I don't care about you know, like oh, if you look at the full 60, 60 – film well hey McGlinchy, you weren't if you're gonna bring up the criticism at least be consistent and bring up when we gave you credit last year so all of a sudden that's, that's the thing that very irks me it's like you're gonna you're gonna cry about oh they're all talking about this my few plays like well, well yeah when, when it's when it's good all of a sudden you don't want to you don't want to point it out but when it when the going gets tough all of a sudden we're the we're the ones in the wrong maybe you should you know ease off of twitter a little bit but no there's no there's no leader there and uh, jack says it perfectly oh they're all emulating kyle shanahan because that's pretty much what he's probably putting in his head like hey guys we just got to do proper execution and it's all good like why is why doesn't he just call people out you know i mean it's not he probably doesn't even think he, he probably may be saying it you know obviously one-to-one wouldn't want to let us let let people know about exactly what he's thinking but yeah, on the nail on the head. There's no Staley like you've been saying, Grant. There's no Richard Sherman. Uh, it, it, it's really bad. It's really bad. You'd think that some of these players would take some ownership, at least in their minds, but if the fact that their mentality is like, oh, no, I just had some bad plays. It's like, no, this is not just some, buddy. You guys are two and three in the easiest part of your schedule. Feel a little bit of heat on your ass and, you know, <laughs> feel some urgency. You do something that like, actually shows that you care more than just saying, hey, yeah, it's just a few bad plays. That was Jose's impression of Mike McGlinchey. Mike, if you're watching, I thought that was a pretty good impression. Uh, Leo, you're up. So, yeah, I think it starts with two people. It starts with Kyle Shanahan. The offense could be terrible in crucial situations, and he won't even say that he would have used a different play. Like, he can't even admit that. No, plays were fine. Sometimes I agree with you. But sometimes I'm just like, what? That was a terrible play in that situation. Kind of like the fourth and inches or fourth and one to McKinnon. Yeah, let's do a dive with our least running back that has opportunity to expand a play up the middle. Smart play. And then it goes on Jimmy Garoppolo's the second part. He's your $27 million franchise quarterback. And would Aaron Rodgers, Tom Brady or any of these other franchise quarterbacks been okay if they got taken out at the second half? They would have said, hell no. I don't care how bad my ankle hurts. You're playing me, coach. I am not going to go out like that. I am not going to go out 30-7 to 7 at halftime. Put me in. Jimmy Garoppolo is just like, okay, where's, where's the headphones? Give me the clipboard. I'll, I'll take my L. Okay, you guys have all had very good answers, very strong answers. I'm going to be the soft one here. The original question was, where are the 49ers leaders? And I'm going to say they're just, they're not on the team. And it's not the player's fault. It's its its the roster construction. There are no good players. There's one good player. There's only one good player in his 30s on this team. And it's Trent Williams, unless I'm forgetting someone. That's the only good player in his 30s. The only good player who's been around the block and understands what a good season looks like, what a bad season looks like. The kind of stuff that Richard Sherman and Joe Staley have. I mean, Trent Williams needs to be the leader, but apparently he ain't one. I don't know if he was one in Washington. He's been on a lot of bad teams. He just doesn't seem to be a leader. So just now, George Kittle was talking. He he was doing his weekly press conference, and he was being very, like, confessional and saying, look, like, losing Joe Staley really hurt, and 
I'll explain why. It's like he, he didn't just hold the offensive lineman accountable. He held Jimmy accountable. He held defensive players accountable. And what, what George was saying is like, look, uh, you know, I want to do that. I'm trying to do that. But it's my fourth year in the league. I don't have the same type of perspective that Joe Staley had. And so what I'm doing is I'm talking to Joe every day. And Joe's doing everything he can to, to tutor me as a leader, which I think is just the cutest thing in the world. Like Niners helping Niners. Like Joe Staley is still totally bought in to this team, even though they're not paying him and he's not on it. It's like, he's seeing it from the, from the sidelines and like, God, if I could only help, but he's not on the team anymore. He can't lead it from his couch, wherever he lives. So I think it's like George is trying, but he acknowledges like the best players on the team right now are like 24, 25, 26, Fred Warner, George Kittle. There's only so much leading they can do. They really need Richard Sherman to come back. And I don't know if he will. You know what the answer is, Grant? What? Uh, they need to trade for the only former 49er who can hold all these guys accountable for a team that ha needs to fire sale. They need to Frank trade for Gore. Frank Gore. Get him on T so he can be that leader, man. All you need to do is give him a few touches, and he's going to get that nice little bulky six-yard carry, and then he's going to be like, that's how, you, that's how you leave, baby. He's going to get all those full spaces, <laughs> and that's how – hey, you know, we throw him a seventh-rounder. Throw him a sandwich. I think pretty sure Adam Gase will take it. Throw him a sandwich. Well, they just lost Le'Veon Bell. Now they need Frank Gore's going to go for 2,000 yards this year on the Jets. Watch. <laughs> you just watch.